Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, first off I simply want to say happy St. Patrick's Day for those of you who do celebrate, but even if you don't, you can still participate in today's awesome, super cool holiday themed deck tech. We're going to be looking at, again, Golgari Adventures in 2024 with a super awesome deck thanks to a couple of upgrades we got from the Wilds of Eldraine that I haven't had a chance to play with in a deck that I am simply calling Get Lucky. I'm a also, this would have been the part right here where I was going to add in the song Get Lucky from Daft Punk, but I didn't want this channel to have any problems, so we had to cut that part out, unfortunately. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we rock, we have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So as you can see, our Golgari Adventures deck that we are playing today has black and green. We're looking at an average mana curve about 2.7, it does look a little high, but don't worry, it will work itself out. We're rocking a total of 32 creatures, 4 artifacts, and only 24 lands. Now if you've been on this channel long enough, you'll definitely know that we've played quite a few adventure decks over time, but you may be wondering, Inferno Man, what is this Golgari build doing that's completely different from all the others out there? Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. I actually do want to show you, there is one cool card that I actually wanted to build around that is super awesome and surprisingly very affordable to own a whole set of. And that's going to be the one and only Mosswood Dread Knight. So this is an awesome two mana, three, two trample creature that's a human knight that reads, when Mosswood Dread Knight dies, you may cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. And the adventure side simply reads, for two mana as a sorcery speed, you draw a card and lose one life. It doesn't seem like it does anything super crazy broken, but it definitely means that you can keep recurring this, making it basically a draw engine piece to help get through your entire deck and outgrind your opponent. We're again going to use two other major engine pieces. We have the one and only Edgewall Innkeeper, a one mana, one, one human peasant that just allows us to draw a card whenever we cast a creature spell with adventure. With Lucky Clover, it just allows us to copy those adventure instant or sorcery spells and then you choose new targets for the copy. Let's be real here, these both of these cards are super hilarious because once they start going off, the amount of value they provide just really makes you feel like you are the luckiest player playing magic. Anyways, moving on to the creatures themselves, which of course are really awesome for the fact that if you haven't played an adventure deck before, you basically get an instant or sorcery staple to each of your creatures, allowing you to get a ton of extra value, which is one of the biggest advantages of playing a deck like this, since you really only have to focus on just putting in all creatures with the deck. Now, speaking of those creatures, in the one drop slot, we have Foulmire Knight here, which is, I, I guess it was just Mosswood Dread Knight before it, Mosswood Dread Knight was the thing, but you get the idea. Still allows you to draw a card, and it's a 1-1 Death Toucher. Order of Midnight here is going to be a creature that has flying. It unfortunately can't block, but its adventure site allows it to bring a creature back from the graveyard. We have Murderous Rider in the 3-drop slot here, which is our removal on the adventure side, and on the creature side, it's a 2-3 lifelinker where even if it dies, you can put it into back into your library at the bottom. As far as our other 3-drops, we also have Lovestruck Beast here, which on the adventure side creates for us a token, but also the creature can come down as a 5-5 for 3 mana, which is actually a really good price. However, remember, it cannot attack unless you control a 1-1 creature. Rosethorn Acolyte here on the adventure side allows us to then mana fix. On the 3-drop creature side, it can then tap itself to then also do some mana fixing. Ferocious Werefox in the 4-drop slot here is a 4-3 Trampler, however on the Adventure side it allows us to create a Monster Roll token, which is actually very helpful for us because member Monster Roll tokens allow us to then give a creature plus 1 plus 1 and give them Trample. This is going to be great for the next creature we're going to talk about, which is Beanstalk Giant. This is going to be our ramp on the Adventure side, allows us to then dig out a basic land and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle, which is really sweet because you also don't have to have it come into play tapped. And on the Creature side, its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands we control. You'll notice that I actually did forget get one actual creature, which is actually going to be our finisher for the deck, which is Smitten Swordmaster. This human knight is a 2-1 lifelinker, but on the adventure side, for one only single mana, you can gain X life and each opponent loses X life for X is the number of knights you control. Although we are not primarily a knight deck, we're mostly focused on the adventure side, we do actually have a decent amount of knights with Foulmire Knight, Order of Midnight, Mosswood Dread Knight, and of course the Murderous Rider to ensure that we can get the max amount of value out of a Smitten Swordmaster. But of course the hilarious part is, even if you actually only utilize just one of these cards, Lucky Clover along with it can member then allows it to copy itself, which sometimes can finish off an opponent very quickly out of nowhere. 
Now, since again, we are a super budget deck today, we only have to worry about basics. So we have seven swamps, 13 forests, and some rivers overlooks here. Although you aren't required to actually have these, it's actually good for you to ensure that you can fix your mana so that way you can get your swamp out or your forest out when you need to in a pinch. Many of you out there have been asking for me to actually add in sideboards to each of our deck decks out there. So regardless of whatever the size of the video is, we're going to start doing that with this video. So hopefully, again, you guys can get some more value out of this if you are interested in playing this in best of three. So Soul Guy Lantern is going to be our catch-all for Graveyard Hate. You have Knight of Dust Shadow here to defeat opponents that have life gain and shut that off. You have extra copies of Order of Midnight and Smitten Swordmaster and Ferocious Werefox. For spot removal, you have a couple copies of Master's Rebuke, which can take out a creature or planeswalker you don't control. You will have Storm Keld Vanguard here as your artifact and enchantment hate, and also it's a very beefy creature if you do cast it on its creature side. And then finally, you have Sir Conrad the Grim. This is actually a really cool card here that can actually then mess with your opponent if they do have a lot of graveyard shenanigans. So for those of you who actually haven't seen this card, I've actually put it together in its own individual super budget brawl deck, but it otherwise reads, Sir Conrad the Grim is a 5 mana 5-4 five, human knight that says, whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad deals one damage to each creature, and for two mana, you can mill a card. Woo! This does seem to do a lot, but with our deck and against certain opponent decks out there, this can be a great hoser against them if they are pulling off some graveyard shenanigans. Now, as far as tips for the deck, ideally, in your opening hand, you should have at least one Edgewall Innkeeper or one Lucky Clover. If you get both, that's even better, but at least one of these will help start getting your engine going. With that, ideally, also, if you can sequence your cards perfectly, it should be at least turn one Edgewall Innkeeper, turn two Lucky Clover, and then turn three, it's going to be something like your Beanstalk Giant to help you start ramping out a ton of extra value, or you can have Rosethorn Acolyte to help fix your mana to make sure you can cast what you need on time. Even if you don't have these cards out, sometimes you might have to focus on the beatdown plan, but that's of course where your Lovestruck Beast can come into play, where you can then cast the Adventure side to create a 1-1 creature token, and then Lovestruck Beast out on turn 3. If you do have some creatures that again can provide extra value when you have a Lucky Clover out there, one of the biggest things you gotta be tricky about with this deck is being very careful as to what you're removing. So say like you have a Lucky Clover out and you're utilizing Murderous Rider. The biggest downside to that card is if you have extra extra copies, you might end up losing those because sometimes the original one might end up not hitting anything. So be very careful as to what you're targeting if you are also getting extra copies of said card. With that, don't be afraid to be aggressive with your card draw here because you have plenty of ways of drawing stuff with your Foulmire Knights, your Mosswood Dread Knights. Lucky Clover, as I mentioned earlier, will then copy those extra card draw abilities. Edgewall Innkeeper sometimes may be better to just cast the creature as is instead of holding off with your adventure side mechanics. Be very careful, of course, because you're going to have to really kind of debate back and forth as to what's best for you but of course once you get a board built up depending on how your opponent's handling things you can either cast off your ferocious werefox's ability to then create some monster roll tokens to push through damage with your beanstalk giants or if you're having a moment where you're going to have to deal with a lot of wraths that's where your order of midnight can come in to then start copying with lucky clover to hopefully bring back your creatures and keep casting them for additional value one of the biggest advantages the deck has is it is very grind happy so if you're a person that likes to grind out your wins and you like to build up a ton of value this is definitely going to be a deck that's going to help you get there. However, one of the biggest weaknesses to the deck is if you're trying to cast the adventure side and maybe your opponent has, say, counter spells, you're going to have a bad time because not only will you be unable to then cast the creature, but also the spell itself that you're casting on the adventure side will also be gone too. So it feels like you're going to lose two spells for one counter spell, which can really feel a little sad at times. However, even if you can get a couple extra copies, sometimes that value may outdo the counter spells depending on what kind of opponent you have. If you do manage to build up a board of, say, knights, save your Smitten Swordmasters until the very end, so that way you can then hopefully just build up a ton of value, drain them out just enough, or even a f one big desperate swing could mean the difference between getting a victory or defeat. However, remember that for its ability, you have to actually cast it as sorcery speed, so ideally, cast your Smitten Swordmaster before you swing for combat. If you do like this style of deck, I have sprinkled throughout this video links to former deck decks containing variants using different colors and different formats, so be sure to check those out if you want to see what adventures you can go on. Ah, ah, see what I did there? Boo, you stink! But in any case, here are my final thoughts that I want to give on the deck. Adventure style Clover decks have always had great value, but with our recent romp through Eldraine again, have really created more variants that push the mechanics into more diverse territory, and you can build them as mono-colored or even five-colored decks out there. Speaking of, I actually do have one other adventure style deck tech out there in the future, but I haven't finished actually the deck yet, and it's gonna need a little more time to refine, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. Maybe we'll get it out sometime during the summer. Otherwise, if you are a fan of spell copying, if you're a fan of grindy gameplay, if you are a fan of fun 
custom theme decks for the holidays that I like to build these for, by all means, give this deck a try, and I assure you, you'll love the value it provides for you, you'll be impressed at how well and powerful it is even on a budget, and whether you play this for St. Patrick's Day or if you want to play it at any other time of the year, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!